you know, this is a human rights issue, as I said, and you have to look at it as that you can help others. You know, you could save a life by being the only voice offering a positive alternative to abortion on campus. You know, I was a human being. I was their grandson. I had inherent dignity and value as a human being. And so, you know, thankfully they changed their minds and I'm here today. Um, my name is Katie Benton. I'm going to be delivering the pro-life workshop today on behalf of Students for Life Ireland. Um, and I'm delighted to be here. This isn't your first time at Each Thousand, is it, giving a workshop? No, it's not. I've been lucky enough to um, be at a few Youth 2000s over the years, um, giving pro-life workshops and, uh, and just enjoying the setup as well. But this is one that's a bit different for all of us, but it's going to be equally as enjoyable. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. It's kind of nice in a way to be able to do it online, um, like we are look very lucky. And um, we're going to have another speaker as well later after you, Gavin. So just for the people watching, this is going to be kind of like a two, we're going to have two speakers in this workshop. So actually, it's really good that we have both a female and male perspective, especially for this workshop. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm delighted to share um, some of what the work that we do at Students for Life Ireland with you today and I'll explain how you can get involved if you're interested and then Gavin one of our students from Trinity is going to share with you his own personal story about why he is pro-life and then he'll offer some insights into the current abortion law in Ireland um, as many of you know the abortion law changed in um, 2000, January 2019 following on from the abortion referendum. So Students for Life Ireland has been running for many years in Ireland and our aim is to achieve an abortion free society in our lifetime. Many of the students involved were involved in the abortion referendum campaign of 2018 and vowed to continue um, to protect the lives of pre-born babies. Uh, we as Students for Life offer help and support to students on campus nationally um, and I'll explain a bit more about that as I go through. So I want to speak to you about the importance of being a pro-life activist. Pro-life activism is one of the biggest human and most important human rights movements of our time today. In Ireland, as I said, we now have legal abortion and we're in much different times now following the referendum, but it's as important as ever to stay motivated for this cause and to not feel uh, disheartened by the changes in law. Abortion is one of the most fundamental human rights issues of our time. You know, if you believe in a society that everyone is created equal and that everyone um, should have um, their basic human rights upheld, then this right should extend to the youngest in our society and the most vulnerable in our community. I think it's always important when you're starting off, or even if you're not starting off, if you're a, an age-old uh, pro-lifer who's been on the scene for a lot, to constantly keep up to date with facts and um, to have have up-to-date information because you're going to come across people that will challenge your views and you'd like to give them the correct information and to be confident on your standpoint. So a great place to start is the science behind this issue and science is on our side of course. Um, so let's look at it. Um, it is a scientific fact that life begins at conception. So at that moment when the sperm fuses with the egg a new life is formed. That is when our eye colour was decided, that's when our hair colour was decided, whether we are a boy or a girl at that exact moment, which is it's quite mind-blowing really. Um, that life at that stage is called an embryo. Um, this pre-born human deserves to be welcomed in life and protected in our law. So going through the development of the baby, um, we know that at about 18 to 21 days, that baby's heart starts beating really fast, about double the rate of an, of an adult's heartbeat. And then at eight weeks, all the organs have been developed. So early on, all that development happens. And at 12 weeks, the little fingerprints are formed and a baby can twist its fingers and curl its toes and can even be seen yawning in scans. I imagine many of you at home have seen those scans images, either of siblings or maybe nieces or nephews, or perhaps your own if you're a bit older and you've had children. Um, at 16 weeks then, that baby starts to have great fun inside their mum's tummy, somersaulting, rolling over, 
And at 20 weeks, the baby's much more aware of life outside the womb, so they can hear loud noises um, and conversations. And they even become aware of touch. So you often see pregnant women holding their bump and kind of, you know, rubbing it. And that's because the baby inside can, can sense that. Uh, from 21 weeks on, then there's a much greater chance for premature babies to survive, which is quite remarkable. And from 30 weeks on, that baby keeps developing, getting fatter, um, its skin and getting thicker, its lungs developing, getting ready to be born. So all of this amazing information, coupled with the amazing advances in ultrasound technology today, emphasize the fact that this unborn baby is not just a clump of cells. It is a human being just like us and it deserves protection. When we're talking about abortion, I always find it helpful to remember that those you're talking to might have might have been impacted by it themselves. You know, that woman you speak to might, or that friend may have had an abortion or a man's partner may have been through it. And it sometimes is a side of an issue that people want to turn a blind eye to, that there is a potential negative impact of having an abortion. Um, some men and women find it very helpful to seek post-abortive counseling following on an abortion. There is a group I want to share with you called Women Hurt. They're an Irish group of women who've come together to speak of their experiences and they offer support for women who've also been through it. They have a website that I'd encourage you to check out. It's womenhurt.ie. And on that website, you can read their stories, watch a little video, and it helps you um, get an understanding for the decisions they made at that time and the impact that it had on their lives following. Um, it's also helpful as they have a, free, a number. So if someone has been through something similar, they can ring them and seek help. Continuing on and educating ourselves on this issue, um, I think it's really important to understand the real, reality of abortion laws um, that allows for a discrimination. So what I'm talking about is discrimination if a baby has a disability or even if the baby is a different gender. So for example, we know that in Britain, just across the water, 90% of babies who are born with Down syndrome or who are diagnosed with Down syndrome in the womb are aborted. And in Denmark and Iceland, this figure is actually closer to 100,000. It's quite startling really, um, because we all know someone in our lives who either has Down syndrome or has some form of um, special needs or disability. And we know that their lives are completely equal to ours in every single way and that we would never um, devalue them in that way. But this is what the abortion culture does. And that's how it sees people with, um, with disabilities. And on the issue of gender side, the UN has estimated that 200 million girls are missing in the world today due to gender side. So when they talk of missing, they're actually talking about baby girls' lives who've been ended due to abortion or infanticide or even abandonment after birth. It's become really widespread in India and China as there is a bias towards um, the boy over a girl. And so there's a pressure on um, in society uh, to have a boy. It's one of the biggest forms of anti-female discrimination in the world today. And this is a really horrific reality of a regime that de deems one group of humans less equal than the other. And what we want and what we've always wanted, those of us in fighting for the pro-life cause is a caring and equal society that values all lives, you know, regardless of gender, ability um, and so on, that we're, we're all equal. As I mentioned earlier, the law in Ireland surrounding abortion changed after the 2018 abortion referendum and the new legislation, which you can go onto the government website and read it, I'd encourage you to do so. Um, at the start of it, it actually clearly states the aim of the new law and it says in quotations, it is a medical procedure which is intended to end the life of the preborn human. So, you know, they're well aware of what um, this new law does. It ends the life of preborn humans. The new law permits unrestricted abortions for the first 12 weeks of pregnancy and the legislation provides for abortion even up to birth on vague and unclear health grounds. Um, it's quite a wide-ranging abortion law, quite more wide-ranging than across the water in the UK. Just recently in June, the government published the figures from 2019, the figures of um, abortions that have taken place in Ireland and we know that 6,666 abortions took place in 2019 
a huge increase from the previous year in 2018. And 98% of these abortions took place within the first 12 weeks of pregnancy in a GP surgery. Uh, you know, we, we just learned about the development of the baby and we heard that their organs are fully there from eight weeks, that heartbeat is beating from three weeks. And it's just such a sad um, situation that we now face in Ireland um, that abortions are taking place legally here. Gavin is going to talk in depth a bit more detail about the law and the abortion figures. So I'll leave that um, up to him. I'm going to move on to why it is important to be active for the pro-life cause in college. Um, and in school and just within, I suppose, within um, amongst your peers, you know, this is a human rights issue, as I said, and you have to look at it as that you can help others. You know, you could save a life by being the only voice offering a positive alternative to abortion on campus. You often hear of the pressure that women face when they find out they're pregnant in college. You know, people are saying you can't have a baby, you can go to college, it's impossible but you could be that person that could help someone get through it and seek the help they need, the support they need. During your years in college, you know, you have so much um, more time than when you're working. You know, it's the best time of your life to spread the pro-life message to others. You have time to educate yourself on the issues. You have time to get involved in various societies um, and develop your knowledge on things. You can go to the conferences on it, put on talks, attend um, lectures and enjoy yourself in doing so. So I'd really encourage you to do that. Um, you're also the best person to do this job. And what I mean by that is you're sitting in lectures with university peers who may be, you know, future decision makers in the world. They may be politicians, doctors, lawyers and parents. And you may never have a chance again to change hearts and minds um, within that three to four years in the college setting. We're so lucky with Students for Life Ireland that we have an amazing group of students who stand up um, and are brave and are counted for their pro-life views on campus. You know, it's not an easy setting, we know that. Um, it's a minority view, but they work hard to share the pro-life message in a really, in a really, I suppose, well thought out and, and uh, honest way. You know, in the past year, we've had um, talks by speakers on campus, medical talks, legal talks. There's been fundraising quizzes, social nights, and also annually in January, we have a fantastic team training weekend, which takes place. Um, it's a, it's a two night affair. We have talks, uh, movies, and just really, it's a great time to get together. Um, and I'd really encourage you to keep an eye out for when we're having our next student summit, it's called, that will be next January. Okay, so you've heard me speak now for a good few minutes and you're probably wondering, you know, if I want to get involved, what can I actually do? Um, so firstly, find pro-life students that attend your college or university. You do need strength in numbers, you need that support. Um, there's no doubt that the upcoming college term is going to be a bit different than it was um, before COVID. So there's going to be less time on campus, more time online. Um, but it's very easy to find like-minded students uh, virtually on social media. So I'd encourage you firstly to sign up to us at Students for Life Ireland. We can connect you then with students um, who attend your college. Um, on our website, studentsforlife.e, uh, there's a special sign up link for the U2000 conference. So if you sign up today or over the weekend, you'll get yourself a free uh, Students for Life t-shirt. We'll post that out to you. So on our website, you'll see an image uh, with the U2000 details. So click on that and you'll get our sign up form. Also, please um, subscribe to our Facebook page and our Instagram page. And also many of the students groups in Ireland have pro-life pages, have pro-life social media pages. So there's UCD for Life, Trinity for Life, NUIG, Life Society, and so on. So connect with them if you attend those colleges. Perhaps your college campus doesn't have a group and you'd like to set one up. Well, then we can help you with that. Get in touch with us and we'll give you the tools that you need to um, set up a society or a group. Um, we've, I'm the dedicated coordinator, so I can liaise with you on this. Um, we have merchandise, we ha can help you run events. And as I said, we also run national events. So keep, um, once you're signed up to our mailing list, you're going to hear more about that. Um, Gavin's gonna take over shortly and share with you his own personal experiences um, on this issue. But um, and that's the end of my, section. So thanks so much for, for tuning in today and I hope you enjoy Gavin's uh, segment. Thanks so much Katie, that was so informative and um, 
I, I'm sure people learned a lot or they remembered a lot from what they'd learned. It's always a good reminder to, um, you know, know the science behind like what we believe. And also it's a great encouragement to know that there are lots of student for life um, groups in different universities all around the country, especially for people who like they're a bit apprehensive about going to college and like sharing their pro-life views. Um, it's not easy. So to know that there's already a group there waiting for you um, mm. is always really amazing. Um, just a question um, about maybe people who have heard this talk and they're like, yeah, I'm pro-life, but like, I also believe in choice. What, what could you think, what do you think we could say to these people to try and encourage them to, you know, realize the consequences of those choices? Yeah, like absolutely. You know, when we talk about choice, I don't think anyone um, disagrees that everyone should have choice and free will over, over their decisions. But when you look at the issue of, um, or what we're talking about here, the the life of preborn humans. We're we're talking about two distinct lives. You know, we know that a life begins at conception. So when a woman is pregnant, there's two lives we're talking about. So when a choice starts to impact someone else's life, that's when you need to protect it. And we already do this in law very well. Um, we know that you know you can't hop into your car after ten points and drive legally. You shouldn't do that because there is a danger that someone else's life will be impacted by that carelessness. Um, you know, smoking laws are the same and so on. So by having pro-life laws, it protects that life in the room, that vulnerable life who ultimately they cannot protect themselves. Um, and it's valuing the, the mom and the baby. And that's the real, um, I think that's the crux of the issue because sometimes you may hear stuff like you only care about you know, the baby in the room, we don't care about the mom. And it's really important for us as pro-lifers to, while we're, we, we know that that's a pre-born human, a little baby, and it deserves our protection, but we also see the value and support that the mom will need at that time. And perhaps if it's a student in college, they'll need a lot of help to get through those years in university, or they'll need the college's help or um, family support, or even, you know, if, you've, if you're in school and you find out you're pregnant, you'll need that support as well. And even not, even if you're, you know, there's plenty of people who, are, who you would have seen are set up with life, and they find out they're pregnant and it doesn't seem like the right time, but we have to be there on the sidelines saying, you can do this, you know, um, we can help you. We'll give you, you know, there's amazing resources. Gavin will speak about this some more as well that help out these women. We have Gianna Care, we have Community Connect, um, Hughes House, and that's more of what we need in Ireland to create that culture that fosters that care for both the unborn baby and the mum. That's perfect. Um, yeah, because I know that that's a big thing that comes up with people who are pro-life, but they vote maybe pro-choice and they still believe like, you know, while it is a baby, I believe in like the choice of the mom, etc. So that is such a good reminder um, and just a good answer to maybe people who are watching this who are pro-choice and they're, they're trying to learn a bit more maybe about the pro-life side. Um, so that, that's all the questions I had to ask. Um, did you want to say anything or share anything else, Katie? No, thank you so much. Um, Gavin will will wrap it all up. Um, and just, yeah, please do sign up. We'll send out some t-shirts to you. Um, and we can stay in touch over the coming year. And I know there's people who are watching this who won't be in college. They're either um, in secondary school or post-college early graduates, but still do sign up because um, we're connected with the Pro-Life Campaign who offer great training for young adults. Um, there's um communications workshops and future leaders programs so by connecting with us we can we can share the those updates as well so yeah and enjoy the rest of the weekend that is brilliant sign up no one uh everyone loves a free t-shirt so <laughs> uh thank you so much katie um for that and we're going to move on and i think we're going to watch a video before we introduce gavin so stay tuned for that As someone who was nearly aborted and who owes his life to the Eighth Amendment, I felt compelled to campaign for a no vote last year, to give others a chance at life. I am alive today due to a constitutional provision, the Eighth Amendment. So obviously the repeal of the Eighth Amendment was hard to take. But what I found especially hard, like many others, were the scenes here in Dublin Castle, that loud celebration 
that abortion would now be legal in Ireland. Now look, I understand in the moment people were excited that they'd won, but there's still that lingering question. How can you celebrate abortion? When I was campaigning for a no vote last year, I felt that most people were actually deeply troubled by the figures from Britain, where one in five pregnancies end in abortion. Sadly, it appears that according to recent estimates, our abortion rate has risen significantly since the repeal of the Eighth Amendment. We have to ask ourselves, how can we avoid going down the very same road which Britain has gone down? I believe we can immediately signal a different direction by reversing the legal threat to those in the medical profession who have a conscientious objection to abortion. As it currently stands, every single GP is compelled by Irish law to assist in the provision of abortion, either directly or through referral. Why insist on this? What signal does it send to those who want to choose life for their unborn child? that the entire health service has been co-opted into the provision of abortion. Does that really reflect who we are? Equally, can we say that we're doing enough as a society to support women through difficult pregnancies and early motherhood? Are we now okay with abortion becoming the default official response to a crisis pregnancy? If the answer is no, then we must raise our voices. We need to come together and speak up for proper conscience rights and for a society that gives unborn life every chance and gives mothers all the support they need. In years to come, I believe that we will change the culture of this country so that everyone, born and unborn, is welcomed in life and protected in law. Okay, so we're just after watching um, a video of Gavin talking about um, first anniversary of repeal. So here he is. Hello and uh, welcome to again to the Students for Life workshop. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, which I'd imagine is probably the majority, uh, my name is Gavin Boyne. I'm 22. Uh, I'm a philosophy student at Trinity College and I am a member of Students for Life Ireland. Um, so my story essentially is that my mother became pregnant with me uh, at the age of 15 after a one night stand. Uh, she had me when she was 16. But there was a period of time where that wasn't uh, necessarily a certainty. Uh, my grandparents at the time had thought that the best thing to do for my mother uh, was to send her to England for an abortion. Um, so they sent her to England. Now, thankfully, uh, we had a constitutional provision at the time, uh, which I'm sure most of you will know, like myself, uh, because of the referendum in 2018. And this, of course, was the Eighth Amendment uh, of our Constitution, which recognised the right to life of all pre-born human beings. So children in the womb, irrespective of what sex they were, irrespective of what race they were, uh, irrespective of whether they had a disability or not, uh, they all had legal protections in Ireland. And uh, this provision effectively made abortion illegal. Now, at the time, my grandparents didn't really know, uh, you know, what the Eighth Amendment was. They just knew that abortion was illegal in Ireland. Uh, and that's, that's why they sent my mother abroad. Uh, she was there for two weeks while my grandparents deliberated back and forth, uh, you know, as to whether or not this was the right thing to do. Um, and I suppose the, the really important thing to note is that the reasoning why they had started asking questions was because it was illegal here in Ireland. Um, you know, and so they looked into the purpose of the Eighth Amendment, what it was all about. And it was thanks to doing that, uh, that they realized what they were doing was morally wrong. You know, I was a human being, I was their grandson. I had inherent dignity and value as a human being. And so, you know, thankfully they changed their minds and I'm here today. And, you know, and this is a very conservative estimate by the way, but there are at least 100,000 people uh, who are alive today because of the Eighth Amendment. And my story is only, is only one of those. Now, uh, I never knew about any of this until 2018. And you know, the timing was unbelievably perfect because it was just before the referendum had, had begun. You know, I would no clue about the Eighth Amendment, uh, about the pro-life movement, about abortion. You know, it's, it's just something that never really concerned me. But uh, once I found out about the fact that I was almost aborted 
and you know was saved by the eighth amendment i knew that i just had to campaign against the repeal uh, of that life-saving amendment and my reasoning is is very simple and very basic it's to give others uh, the same chance at life that i had and you know the main driving force behind uh, the pro-life worldview is that as human beings we're all valuable you know we're all worth something and we all deserve a uh, a shot at life and as as you saw at the start of the video which makes me cringe every time i see it by the way uh in in dublin castle there were celebrations that ireland as a country had repealed the eighth amendment uh you know that every single pre-born child had lost their only legal protection and that was the right to life and what struck me as very odd and is, you know, recently as 30th of June, uh, the abortion statistics for 2019 were released. Now, I should say that in, uh, in 2018, Irish women sought 2,879 abortions in other jurisdictions, such as the United Kingdom. Um, in 2019, that number jumped to 6,666 here in Ireland. And when, you know, we account for numbers abroad, that figure jumps up to over 7,000. Um, if you're on Twitter and happen to be scrolling when, you know, those figures were released, you might have seen, like I did, a lot of pro-choice people uh, celebrating at this huge increase. And, you know, that's something I find really troubling and, and just very sad because the vast majority of abortions are procured for socioeconomic reasons, you know, uh, as opposed to any kind of health issues. Poverty would be a very big cause uh, of women seeking abortion, the same goes for homelessness and, and so on. And so it, it definitely isn't a cause for celebration that these women have essentially been forced into having an abortion because the state has failed to, to provide for them. So, you know, if the pro-life movement wants to see a reduction in the numbers of abortions, well then we should start by offering support to women uh, who find themselves in very difficult uh, circumstances when they are pregnant. And thankfully, we have groups like Gianna Care, Hughes House, initiatives such as Community Connect. And, you know, they really, really do make such a big difference. Um, where you come in, though, is, and, you know, we definitely need you involved in, in this fight, is with organisations such as Students for Life. Um, the typical woman who seeks an abortion is college-aged. So it's, it's so important to have that pro-life presence of support on campuses you know, to show that abortion isn't the only uh, solution to a difficult pregnancy. You know, as a society, we should all be trying to eliminate the difficulty surrounding a pregnancy as opposed to eliminating the pregnancy itself. Uh, you know, so I would encourage all of you uh, to get involved because believe me, this is without a doubt, you know, by far uh, the most important human rights issue of our time. And according to uh, the World Health Organization, which, you know, is in the news every day now, um, there are an estimated 40 to 50 million abortions annually worldwide. And, you know, that, that really is a tragedy. But this is a fight that we can and will win. Uh, we are definitely, without question, on the right side of history. Um, you know, so as I said, we'd love for you to get involved with us. So please check out our Students for Life Ireland uh, Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, most importantly, though, uh, head over to our website, studentsforlife.ie click on the homepage, sign up, you get a free t-shirt. Who doesn't love a free t-shirt? Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining our workshop today. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Gavin. It's really good to get another perspective on the pro-life cause. Um, just um, if I could ask you a question, because you were obviously very vocal um, during the pro-life um, for the pro-life cause, and you were speaking a lot at um, like pro-life rallies and things. I'm sure some people who were there would recognize you and your story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all good, it's all good. Um, but I know that um for men it's probably really hard during um the debate and probably still is to speak out about the cause. Um and I know um many of them were silenced during the um whole debate and the whole refer before the, the referendum. So what would you say um to those who argue that men shouldn't have a voice um in this debate? Yeah, I mean First of all, it's, it's sexist to say that, you know, because you're a man, you, you can't have a say on this issue. Uh, but when it comes to issues of human rights, every human being gets to have a say. Um, for example, if we look at other great human rights abuses 
in history, such as slavery, for example. It'd be very strange if we stated that only slaves get to have a say because they're the ones directly affected by slavery. Um, you know, when it comes to the abortion issue, it may be the case that it is the woman who is having uh, the abortion. But at the end of the day, an innocent life is being taken. Um, not only that, but the creation of, of human life requires both a man and a woman. And so, you know, I think to say that men can't have a voice, it, it's just a tool to silence uh, the debate. Um, you know, people often say that it's only the woman who goes through an abortion and suffers. But I've heard so many stories of men who become suicidal, for example, because they've lost their child. Um, not only that, but a man's fatherly rights are completely taken away uh, by abortion. So this, this is an issue that definitely does affect men too. Yeah, that's, it's really good to highlight that as well, because I know some people who are watching maybe had that belief before and they maybe haven't mm -hmm. really taken the chance to hear what men have to say on, on the issue. So thank you so much for sharing your perspective and also your story, because, you know, um, it, it's kind of challenging to hear um, if you are pro-choice or pro-abortion. It's kind of hard mm -hmm. to hear someone who actually was directly almost affected by that choice and uh, thankfully their life was saved. So um, thank God for your existence. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. um, so thank you so much for coming and sharing um, everything with us. It's Gavin's first time at uh, Utah Thousand Retreat, so uh, pray for him. No, <laughs> um, I hope that you actually enjoy um, all the talks and any of the other workshops. I'm sure get, I will. If you get a chance to hear them. And uh, yeah, you must let us know what you thought about the, the retreat after this. <laughs> Follow up video. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully we can um, yeah. hopefully we can actually see it at a, a normal, like, well, not normal, but a physical retreat in the future. Mm, so thank you so much, yeah. Gavin. Thanks for the invitation.